Mike Schmitz of ESPN. We're here with Sadiq Bey, uh, forward out of Villanova. Sadiq, you made a huge jump, you know, from your freshman season to your sophomore year. You know, doubled your scoring average, increased your three point percentage by I think almost ten percent. Uh, what allowed you to to make such a big jump between your freshman and sophomore season? I'm um, just learning the system, um, you know, Villanova, and just trying to trying to make myself comfortable within it. Um, you know, countless hours, you know, off the court, uh, making sure that I'm comfortable with everything that the coaching staff wanted me to do, but also trying to expand my skill uh, at every step of the way. So uh, I just think you know, that was a lot of the, the, the tribute. To me, I, I kind of see you as a guy who can slide in and space the floor, you know, at that kind of combo forward spot, right? You have the size to play the three, also maybe slide up to the four a little bit. And like I mentioned earlier, you really made a jump as a perimeter shooter, you know, this past season. Uh, I think almost 10% increase and then 42% uh, on your career. What what was it that allowed you to make such a big jump as a shooter specifically? Just working on my craft every day. Um, you know, in, in our offense, you know, we – you preach like catch and shoot. Yeah. Um, even if it's slightly contested, like if it's if you want to step into it and uh, we feel comfortable, we can let it go. So I think just practicing like every day and just working on the fundamentals and my coaches that helping me, you know, perfect, try to perfect my shot as much as I can. Uh, just gave me the confidence to be able to you know, shoot better. So um, it was yeah, it was great. Yeah, every team's looking for a guy with your size who can step in and make a three, right? And, and you can see here, you know, this is great shot preparation on the wing, hands and feet ready. You're going to hop into it in really good rhythm. Uh, you know, that that's great. That's an NBA-looking shot. And then your freshman year here, hands and feet ready again in that deep corner, and, and then the and one as well. So uh, we've seen it kind of on the wing. We've seen it in the corners. And then you're also your ability to kind of – pop to space as that small ball four, right? And, and then when, when teams are running you off, like you see here, you know, you have that mid-range game as well, you know, being able to kind of stop on a dime and, and rise up, you know, you're really good in, in those middle areas. And I think the last piece to the puzzle is just being able to extend it to NBA three, right? And, and being comfortable, uh, you know, not really hesitating on some of these handoffs. Uh, do you feel like you're comfortable from NBA three right now? Oh, uh, why not yet? I yeah. Like I, I am. Um, that's just kind of having to do with just being able to uh, want to step into our shots, you know, especially in college. You doesn't really, you don't really realize sometimes how far we're shooting. Right. Uh, so I think just you know feeling comfortable, uh, you know, with any range. Yeah, and, and so you we have the shooting piece, kind of playing out of spot ups. Maybe if you are at that small ball spot, picking and popping to space. Uh, I think you can really add value a, as a cutter and an offensive rebounder. Also, it seems like that was kind of more your role, you know, as a freshman, and then yeah. it expanded. Uh, what makes you such a such a good cutter? What, what what are the keys to being a good cutter? Just um, just kind of having a feel for how my you know defenders playing me, um, and they really emphasized my freshman year was really emphasized that. Um, you know, for a way that I could help on the office and just move out the ball, yep. uh, cut a lot. So I kind of read if my defender is, is looking at the ball a lot. Now I can, I can basket cut or backdoor cut. And I'm just kind of just trying to get myself involved in the offense. You know, I think that's important, um, moving and spacing. Yeah, for sure. And so we've touched on the, the catch and shoot game. And another thing that really stands out about you is just your ability to move the ball quickly and, and make – quick decisions. You know, I, I love that. It never sticks with you. Um, is that something that Jay Wright just really preaches, Coach Wright? Uh, is that something you've always had, kind of that ball-moving mentality? Yeah, I think it's kind of a mixture of both. I mean, I think coming in, that's the habit that he wanted us to have was to be able to move the ball if, you know, you don't see your opportunity, move it, reverse it, make a play on the other side. That was a big concept of ours. But just seeing that open opportunity because, uh, you know, I think – when the defense shifts a lot, I think it, it, it enables, you know, reverse passes, skip passes to be able to have them keep moving and just have a better opportunity to score. So I think that kind of is what goes all into it. Yeah, and this is a great possession here of, like, Villanova basketball. So talk me through this play here and kind of what you're specifically doing. You're in the uh, – you're going to filter to the corner here. Yeah, so this is uh, kind of like a driving space for us. It's yeah. not really a set play. Uh-huh. Um, we're just kind of – whenever a uh, man drives, we, we exchange on the weak side. Yeah. So um, – and then after that, it's just driving space opportunities. So yep. every time we ex- we, um, we exchange, we try to reverse the ball to the other side. So, uh, you know, Colin started it with the driving space, and usually you can end with it um, if we keep reversing it. So I think we did a great job of that. 
Yeah, and this is a clinic for any any team, really. I mean, if you count the number of passes, right? So you're going to have one, you're going to have two, you're going to have three, you're going to have four eventually here after the jump stop, and then five, and then another paint attack, and then six, and then seven. That's picture-perfect basketball. And, and that's why I think t- scouts and teams feel really comfortable with Villanova prospects always because they really know how to play. You, you've played in huge games, had a winning impact uh, in different settings. And so I think you're going to fit day one because of that. Um, and then what's what about this? What's your read here? So teams know they've got to reverse the ball uh, quick. Yep. And, you know, I think just kind of reading how the defense is all going to our, our corner man. So yep. Uh, ball fake and want to reverse it back. So I think that was just the concept we all would have is just reverse the ball and make a play. So. Yep. And they kind of stun at you and try to take that quick swing away, right? Like you said. Yep. And then just a basic kick out, you know, really simple, effective basketball. Um, and, and like I said, the ball doesn't stick with you. You're able to make these quick reads. Here they're going to run you off, attack going right, and what do you see? Just uh, his man, uh, Jeremiah, his man stepped up. Like, mm-hmm. He had him sealed oh, you know, over the top, so I think uh, just try to drive and either use that seal to get the rim or if he comes to help, just dump it off to him. So I think he did a great job of sealing. Yep, and he's got a bright future himself, right? You know, really, really good player. Um, so, all right, that's kind of you in the – playing off of other guys' role, right? I think that's where you can step in right away and have an impact. Ball mover, shot maker, cutter, offensive rebounder, kind of like your freshman year, right? And and now I think what teams really like about you on top of that is you're a guy who can also handle the ball. You can play some pick and roll. You're you're a mismatch in the post. Um, I mean, your freshman year, we'll get into the pick and roll stuff, but I think you used nine ball screen possessions all year. And then this last year, it was like 17% of your offense or something like that. Yeah. Um, what went into that evolution as a guy who can now handle the ball and kind of create for yourself and others? Well, I just think our, 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 my freshman year, we had a lot of confidence in Eric Pascal. Yep. And, Booth, and they were, you know, the playmakers. Um, they, were kind of, they had the experience. They had the skills. So we, uh, the rest of us kind of just play off of them. Yep. Uh, with a younger team we had this year, I uh, was able to use some of my skill set and be and having one year of experience, being able to use that, and, you know, and still trying to, to play within our system. So I think uh, it's just an opportunity for me to mm-hmm. be able to, and I, I was, always felt comfortable in that role no matter what. So I think it was uh, it was a great mix. Yeah, and you're really comfortable taking kind of. Uh, you know, opposing guards and wings, you know, down on the block, right? And, and getting to that left shoulder jump hook, really, really basic. And then also here, you know, what he fights over the screen, and then what you just take him on the block. Yep, yep. So after the just screen, um, if he, you know, if I can't go over to the rim, we have a back down, yeah, post up. So we're just trying to see uh, who's available on the weak side. If not, just go one on one. So that's kind of. That's how our, that's how the teams were playing us early in the year. Yeah, we did three, so that let a lot of those opportunities open. Yeah, for sure. And so we've seen the left shoulder jump hook, the right shoulder jump hook. And I think you have the short turnarounds too, like you'll see from Middleton here. He's really good, uh, you know, turning over that back shoulder. Have you watched him much? Oh, yes. Uh, and then the Bucks are on, always on TV and yep. watching them. But uh, I've seen a lot of comparison with that. Uh, he has a great feel for the game. Yep. Uh, doesn't let anybody rush him. And uh, he's, you know, he's a great player. So, yeah. you know, I've definitely watched him a lot. Yeah, I think that's a good mold for you, too, you know, uh, because he's got size, 6'8", uh, and, and can also play pick and roll, and that's something you've continued to evolve, and we'll show a lot of his clips here. So, um, as a ball screen scorer, okay, we'll get into the passing stuff, but as a scorer, what's the key to keeping defenses honest in these type of situations? Get them hit off the, off the ball screen. I try to set them up and uh, make sure that, my guy, you know, if he runs off, but if, if he doesn't, if he doesn't get hit, uh, just try to have him off balance. Try to use a couple of dribble moves to get him off balance, and and then after that, uh, it's kind of just reading the big and seeing what he does. So yep. that's kind of what goes into, you know, my thought process. You know, for sure, and you do a really good job setting him up here. And I think that the biggest thing in the NBA for you to be a consistent ball screen scorer is if they go under, being able to knock that down, right? Uh, yep, yep. And, and I think that's an area you improved. Uh, you know, throughout the course of the year. How have you evolved as a off-the-dribble shooter? Because I think you made only like seven pull-ups your freshman year, and then this year it seems like you took a step there. Um, I think just the reps. And yep. Then, you know, the reps um, in practice and off, you know, and um, just on in the, in the off-season as well. I think uh, kind of just trying to see how teams were playing us. Uh, I know that a lot of teams trying to take away our threes, and, uh, and then I was successful, I think, in, in this game getting downhill, so I tried yep. to rely on that. But like you said, I had to, I needed to read that better, and, and if he went under the screen, uh, maybe, you know, shoot that. Uh, so just kind of like you said, just, just the reps of it, 
and having those those failures actually you know, yeah. help you know uh, you know get better throughout the season. Yeah, for sure. Because in college, there were so many times where teams even would go under, but you were strong enough at that level to get to the rim, get wherever you wanted, right? And at the NBA level, it might not be like that. Um, so, you know, I think being comfortable from three there and not allowing them to, to shrink the floor is going to be huge. Um, and then as a passer in pick and roll, you know, I think you're really comfortable going to your right. Uh, what's your read here? Um, just come, come off the ball screen. I, I didn't really hit him, get him hit off the screen that much, but I knew if I try to drive my right, uh, he's going to either show or spin a little bit. Mm-hmm. I have a shooter in the corner, so I, I trusted him to be able to, you know, to hit that. And just kind of just reading if that weak side man, uh, strong side man, actually, if he helps, yep. then kick it out. Yep. I think the next step is being able to make some of these passes going to your left. So what do you, what do you see here that maybe you could have done differently? You get the um, foul anyway. You get to the front of the rim, draw the foul. Yeah, immediately after, after I kind of stopped the win, I saw Colin – on the weak side, you know, he was rolling up, so he was open. But also, um, the pick and pop guy, Jermaine, he was open as immediately as when I first came off. So I yep. could have hit him. You know, both both reads would have been, I think, fine that situation. Yep, and maybe it's a lefty hook pass, right? You know, to the pop, yep. or if you get downhill, and, and I think being able to pass off a live dribble like that, going both directions, is is huge. And here's Middleton, not the cleanest pass, but I mean, that's pretty smooth, right? Yep, yep. Uh, that's, that, that's the exact pass. Could have made right in that situation. So right, exactly. So I think becoming comfortable, you know, with that with that left as well. And here's another situation. You're not a guy who turns the ball over very often at all. And, and you're going to see on these clips, like you're rarely going to make a mistake. And so I mean, you still move the ball here. But my, my point is more if you're able to maybe it's a retreat dribble or lift up and just make that lefty dump pass to the roller. Um, and, and then if that weak side tag you know commits, then you got the lift man right. Uh, and yep. again, you re-space here, wide open three. So you're always playing good basketball. Just some little nuances, um, you know, to, to kind of look at and being comfortable going left as well. So, you know, we've seen it in pick and roll. We, we've seen your ability to hit the roller, hit the lift man, uh, and then hit that weak side shooter. So, uh, you know, I think you did make a big step there. And you're a guy who can play, you know, second side pick and roll and eventually maybe that Middleton role uh, of bringing the ball up and even initiating some offense. Um, so what about as a finisher? What, what are some things you've been looking at uh, to take your finishing game to the next level. Well, just working, you know, just working on my body. Um, I think just every every year, I feel like I, I've improved in, 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 in athleticism and my strength and just almost overall my body. So I think um, better reads, like you said, and, and just overall, just uh, working on you know this athleticism. I think we're just helping be able to play more above the rim and um, you know and maybe and, and finish in traffic better. So I think. think all those kind of go into it. You know, just kind of an example of, uh, you know, when you come to that two foot jump stop, you'll, you'll see a lot of, a lot of the best finishers kind of inside hand scoop or maybe speed finish. Um, anything you could have done differently here? Like you said, inside, inside hand scoop, I think I, I could have, or just try to just take, I kind of waited and paused a little bit to see what he was going to do. Yeah. So we could have stopped and, uh, you know, maybe come off my, off my left shoulder or just kind of just went straight to the rim and uh, like you said, inside scoop or try to play more above instead of going to the other side. Yeah, and you'll see Jason Tatum here is a guy who's really good at, at using his length at the rim, and, and that's Mo Bamba in the drop who's got like a seven bajillion wingspan, and he just finishes that speed inside hand finish, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think just being crafty, being able to get it up on the rim quickly, you know, is going to be huge. And then and then I think the last piece is, is adding a floater too. Have you looked at yeah. that? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, no. Just being able to mix that up, um, you know, kind of in our system, we don't really do that as much. Yeah, you know, I think with Nova, but um, like you said, the next level, I think that's going to be there. It's going to be there for sure. Uh, you know, to be able to keep the defense more honest and be able to have a, a variety of finishes, so uh, that's definitely going to help at the next level. Yeah, no question. And you have the touch. We've seen it on the jump hooks. We've seen it from three. Yeah. So I think you'll be able to add that. Uh, you know, with, without question and. One thing I like that you improved this year is just, like you said, being willing to take more contact and being more aggressive. Um, you don't get the dunk here, but I love this. Just trying to put them on a poster, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and that type of aggression, getting downhill, using your athleticism, using your length, you know, I think we'll continue to see more and more of that from you uh, at the next level. So, uh-huh. All right, so we've seen the offensive side of the ball. Uh, defensively, obviously, that's been a big emphasis at Villanova for a long time. Most guys are NBA-ready defenders. Um, how would you describe yourself defensively, and how many positions do you think you can guard? I describe myself as a really versatile defender. Um, I would say I could, I would be comfortable guarding every position, but specifically like one through four, and 
um, maybe some five as well. Um, and I, I've been having to do that, you know, both my years at Villanova. So just uh, being comfortable in every situation I, I possibly can, uh, I think it's helped me. Yeah, no question. And you have good feet, good size, good length. Um, you know, here on this possession, do a pretty. I know he gets deep, but you do a good job of, of staying down, even if you could be middle, and then you know, ending with a with a hand contest. I think that's that's pretty good defense, forcing him into a shot like that. And um, uh, overall, I think you were really good, especially even if they do get a step. You do a great job of using your length at the rim. Uh, what, what are you doing here? I'm just trying to give you know my space. I know he's pretty quick, and I know they're kind of trying to do a blur cut. So I know yeah. I'm trying to get downhill. And uh, try to use my inside hand and be able to make a play at the rim. So, yeah, that's great. And, and we saw you guarding point guards, shooting guards, you know, stepping out, guarding all types of positions. And I think that's a, a situation where you can be really disruptive. And another wing, Mikael Bridges, you know, a guy who guards point guards all the time, has arms that never end, and gets a ton of these on ball blocks. Uh, have you studied him at all? Yeah, I mean, we, we, kind of, we have to, uh, yeah. especially being at Nova. Uh, yeah. You see a lot of his on ball, the off ball, you know, defense. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a tremendous resource to have to be able to, you know, to watch the film of him and, and the, how they play defense at that time. Yeah, he's he's really good uh, on the ball, off the ball, just just like you said. Um, so chasing shooters, they might ask you to run around with a Doug McDermott or a, a Landry Shamit or a Kyle Korver, JJ Redick. Uh, what's the key to kind of chasing shooters in these type of situations? I think uh, staying attached yep. is, is, a, is a big thing. And kind of just reading whatever philosophy we have on the defensive end with certain shooters, like either running off the line, yep. not, not, get, not get hit by the screen, stay on the outside shoulder. Yep. Uh, it kind of depends on you know who we're guarding, like you said. But for some of those shooters, obviously you want to keep them on you know, off the three-point line and run them off and stay attached. So yep. um, yeah, I think that's, that's definitely the, the goal. Yep, and I don't know, it's Canisius, I don't know the scouting report on this guy, but uh, just this is your freshman year, right, kind of a little late, late reacting, get caught on the screen, whereas this year, uh, you know, here you're guarding, I think, Jared Butler, do a great job, like you said, getting on his outside hip, right, and, and being attached early, and then you're there on the catch, okay, he's still able to get a piece of the paint, but there's that verticality again, uh, so... Really, really good, and I think you're a guy who has the footwork, foot speed, you know, to chase those guys around, and then blowing up these DHOs too, right? What's your goal here? Like you, like exactly what you said. They come off the ball uh, of the DHO. Um, you know, we don't want to let him get the hand back because if, if he gets it in comfortable position, he can go downhill. So just trying to, like you said, blow through it and, yep. and make it tough and, put, and make, make it physical and make them have to, you know, screen me illegally, and then that's what uh, you know the focus was. Yep, and that's that's perfect. Taking that away, and then. They get the hit anyway, but you do a great job again. There's the verticality at, at the rim. You'll see uh, just making it tough on these guys, you know, to finish over your length and, and being really active. So, um, you know, I think that's huge and just shows your versatility defensively. Now, off the ball, um, you know, a lot of analytics metrics will look so much at steals and blocks and steal rate and block rate, and yours aren't super, super high for a guy with your size and length. Is that more a, a system thing? Is that more you have room to improve there? How do you view that? I mean, you could say, you know, a mixture, but I think it's not trying to gamble as much on yep. certain steals. Yep. I think trying to, you have a, a term called play, playing solid. So uh-huh. you're trying to be there. Be there. If we can steal it, obviously you want to steal it. Right. You're trying to be solid. No, definitely. And, and I love this possession from you because it's a multiple effort situation. So, uh, what, you want to meet him outside the charge circle, right? Yep, yep, for sure. And then on the on the kick out, what do you do? On the kick out, I just, I just read and see my my other defender. Uh, who he, who does he take? Because it's two people he could he took. So yep. if he took the ball in that situation, I got his man. Because yep. he stayed, I got the man you know with the ball. So I think that's where you know I, that's where it kind of went to that that play. Yep, and you're really alert. Like I said, helping outside the charge circle. You get him off the three-point line, but then you're still able to make it a tough shot in the paint, get some help from your teammate. That's a big-time play. Um, whereas here, not the same situation, but uh, you know, communicating, switching, getting on the floor for the loose ball, I love that. Um, what, what, take me through kind of what's going on here. So like, we were all kind of communicating, just kind of switch. I think at that point with me and Colin at the second time, we kind of didn't communicate enough. Or we might have both said we had balls, so at that point I knew that the slip guy was going to be open. So I just tried to use my length and, and try to go, go get it yep. at that point. That's great. And, and again, just the level of effort, you can cover any mistakes with that type of effort. Um, but just one more example here of you know maybe a situation to make a play at the rim, right? As Quentin Rose filters out to the to the corner, what what's your role? Uh, just like you said, stay in help. Yep. Um, I, 
at that point we were we were playing um, him as a shooter, so we felt as though if our guy wasn't completely yep. blocked, that we would stay and help to give out give out no easy threes. So it's kind of just it's like a always and never as far as reading, you know what. If, if I see him get blown by, come over and help. Right. If not, stay on the shooter. So I think it's just it's probably the wrong read at the time, but kind of just a part of our uh, our scheme. That's kind of how we, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. It, it, you got to make that decision of, okay, if you feel yeah. he's on his hip and he can make a play at the rim, I'm going to stay home and take away that three. Yeah. Um, so definitely. Right, yeah. So, yeah. So right there, I probably should, you know, stay and help, but uh, it's just a wrong read, but it was good. Yeah, still a tough finish, you know, at, at the rim. Uh, whereas I think in the NBA, you'll be in more of these situations here. Dorian Finney-Smith, theoretically, his guy's going to filter to that corner. So he has got the ability to, you know, go make a play at the rim, right? Uh, yeah. And I think that can be you. A guy with similar size, similar length. You know, you, you have more game at the same stage, but I think you can be that type of energizer on top of some of your, your skill stuff as well. Yeah. And then, like I said, just sometimes you're in these situations where it's either a charge or, or a verticality, right? How do you make yeah. that decision? Because it's just be decisive. I think at that point, I, I you did a great job avoiding it. Um, I was preferred to take a charge, but like you said, just uh, being more decisive. And if I see him try to avoid it, try to make sure I don't get the blocking foul, and I could have put my hands up and jumped. So I think uh, just trying to have those different reads uh, yeah, would, yeah. would be great. Yeah, and it's moving fast, right? The game's moving fast, so being able to, you know, instinctually make those plays and here you do a really good job. You're inside the charge circle, but jumping up straight up and down and using your length to affect shots at the rim. And then I think the last piece of the puzzle for you that where you're really good is, you know, you're a great box out guy. You do a really good job of finding a body. I know that's an emphasis for you guys. And then here just just going to get it, right? Uh, in being an active rebounder. So, uh, you know, you have the ability to step up and guard point guards, chase around shooters, wings, being active off of the ball. And, and that combined with your offense, I think, is, is an ideal fit, you know, in today's NBA. Um, how do you look at the pre-draft process in, in terms of, uh, you know, how you want to attack this and how you view the next level? Is it about, I want to be a lottery pick or it's about situation and, and where I land? How, how do you view all that? Uh, first, I'm just, just thankful to be in, a, in this opportunity, um, in this situation. But I think, like you said, just the best, you know, a, a best fit. I mean, obviously, I want you know to, you know, be as you know as high as I possibly can. But you know, I also want to make sure I'm to try to be in a great situation. Um, so, you know, just just whatever you know the team you know needs, where I where I feel as though wherever they feel as though they uh, I can step in and help. That's kind of my focus. And it's trying to, like you said, to my craft in every which way, so it wouldn't be too much doubt of. Mm-hmm. What he can do, what he can't do. So I, I think just me trying to control what I can control mm-hmm. is, is most important for me. And I mean, as far as being picked, I, I can't control that. So yep. trying to control what I can control. Yep. And uh, lastly, what's the biggest takeaways from Coach Wright? You know, he's a guy who's produced so many different pros, and I think NBA scouts, like I said, when a kid goes to Villanova, they feel like they're going to be prepared for the next level because of the way he teaches. What, what's your biggest takeaway from him? Uh, just being, just being a, a professional and just being, you know, a, a man, the best man you can be. I think just trying to put myself in, in, the, in the best situation I can by working on, on everything I need to work on, and, um, and just trying to put myself in that best situation where I feel like I'm the most complete player I can be. I think that's what you know I, I, I took away from there, just having that, being able to have habits that can, you know, help you be great in the future. Um, and just how to just be a professional about it and work hard. So I think um, all those kind of factors help me, um, and it's, it's still helping me, you know, become the best player I can be. So when you were a five eight freshman, did you think you'd be potentially playing in the NBA? Uh, confidence wise, <laughs> <laughs> I was I was confident, but I, I, my body was didn't agree with me at that time. So I, was, I, I always had that as a dream, but to be honest, I, I didn't think so. I was, I was just saying. You know, can I play on varsity? You know, can, I, right. can I get a, a scholarship? I, I I wasn't thinking like, oh yeah, I could be a pro, but always had that confidence in me. So <laughs> yeah, no, I think you're a great example for you know other young guys coming up who maybe weren't McDonald's All Americans, and, and so yeah. it's been cool to watch your trajectory and you've improved you know each and every season. I think you're one of the most NBA ready guys you know in this draft to come in and have a winning impact right away. So uh, Sadiq, I appreciate you taking the time, man, and best of luck throughout the process. Man, thank you for having me. Man. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.